So let's start lighthearted. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> did you enjoy last night? I did. What I were did. you? I was Blueface. It was a rapper, if you didn't know who that was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a rapper. <laughs> uh, who would you say was the best? Um, Dwight, for sure. He was Respucia. You didn't see it? No. Let me show you. <laughs> Hold on. It might be pulled up already. Hold on. Just give me one second. Right here. Psh. Oh, dear. Yeah. Can you show you that to the camera? Yeah, you want to see it, everybody? <laughs> Dwight Howard. Oh, dear. Best costume. <laughs> Bar none. Best costume. He's elite. Was he able to walk around? Of course. What do you mean? Let me see. He that. didn't weigh that much. Well, I know <laughs> that. But there was a lot going on there. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. he had best for sure. Yeah. 100%. Awesome. Okay. Kyle, yeah. what was it like to get back to practice today with the rest of the Reality. Team? Uh, It was fun. Um, you know, it kind of just reminds you not to take the, gra the game for granted. Um, you know, this is my really first practice since August, so, um, you know, it was fun. Any trepidation about getting back on the floor tomorrow? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, if I feel good tomorrow, then I'm playing. So, um, limited minutes, obviously, since I haven't really done much. So, yeah. How eager were you after all you did yesterday, especially to wake up today, just to see how it felt? Um, very eager. Um, you know, yesterday was kind of the most running I've kind of done and um, to wake up and not really have too much discomfort was a, a good sign and getting out here and the same thing. So, uh, you know, hopefully it's, it's the same for tomorrow's game, so. Yeah, when tomorrow morning in Dallas, I mean, what, what do you do to actually test and say, okay, this is what I'm comfortable doing? Um, what are the standards of comfort? Just wake up, move around, go to shoot around, um, you know, game time if I feel fine and I don't feel no aches and pains and I play, so. Did you have to, I know like early on you talked about different cardio things that weren't, wouldn't put weight on your ankle that you could do. Like, did you, was there like a progression of like, now I can advance to this certain thing? What, what was that progression? Um, I think it started with, um, you know, when I had the injury, just doing upper body stuff, mm -hmm. which was hell. And then um, underwater treadmill, and then it was the Alter G machine, and then it was um, on the court. But. I mean, at the end of the day, all that stuff prior to getting on the court doesn't really matter because um, nothing can simulate running up and down and starting and stopping. So upper body cardio stuff, like yeah, rowing and like, like rowing. Um, I don't know what this machine like, is. Yeah, yeah anyway. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that don't that don't work at all. No. So, nah, <laughs> nah. You, you have had a lot of time. We at least we've seen you working with Phil. Um, what have you gotten specifically out of those sessions, and what do you, what sort of added perspective does he bring that's a little new to you? Um, good stuff. A lot of uh, good ball handling stuff. Getting into my pull up, um, isolation work, um, you know, footwork on the post. You know, a lot of good things that um, you know suit my game well. So, you talked about the things you've added to your game and, and ball handling being a big part of what you focused on this summer. Do you, do you bring that out like tomorrow in your first game back, or do you need to get your legs back before you try to like do new things? On the <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna bring it out if I play, but um, you know, I feel good. Um, up, up and down. I feel like I'm you know, myself, but um, just uh, the condition aspect, you know, playing more than three, four, or five possessions, you know, just trying to get up and down, that's going to take a little bit of time. But I think once I get my legs and my conditioning, then, um, you know, people see, you know, me. So you've talked a lot about wanting to develop that versatility as playmaking, defending. Where, where do you feel like you are right now in terms of that process? I mean, I've only had one practice, so it's kind of tough to really say. But uh, in terms of what you were working on, though, even before. The oh, injury. before I think I was uh, making strides. Um, if you guys look back to what I did with USA, defending and um, playmaking, you know, hitting shots, you know, just doing the things that, you know, back then I was really progressing on and adding to my template, and um, you know, had a sit back, but um, you know, I'm young, I didn't lose it, so. How critical do you think it is in terms of this team meeting and sealing the idea that you can bring out that versatility and fill a lot of different roles? Um, very much so. I think that uh, you know, with me being a guy that can you know dribble, handle, and pick a roll, I can pop, I can um, post, shoot threes, come off screens. You know, I think uh, it's going to serve well. Um, obviously, it's going to take a little bit of time, not only for myself but just for the team in general, because you know it's a long season and. 
you know, you can't really judge us or really until, you know, at the end of the season when, you know, we're supposed to be at our, um, you know, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, but psh, that, so. I know you've got to be more, most excited about, you know, taking the floor yourself and, and seeing how you feel, but, um, you know, from the time this team traded for Anthony Davis, how, how has your anticipation been for that moment and him being your teammate? Um, I'm super excited to play with him. You know, I think that uh, me and him are, you know, going to work out well. You know, if you look back at uh, the Pelicans days when he was there, you know, he played his best basketball when uh, Miritic was at the four and he was at the five. So, um, you know, I'm kind of similar in that aspect of spacing the floor and giving him space to operate down there. And, you know, can't really double him when, you know, me, Brian, and him are on the floor. So um, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, he talks about as you were working over these last month or two, how much you actually inspired him. Did you know that were, were teammates ever in, in your ear and just in terms of making sure that they knew how hard you were working? No, I didn't know that. Um, you know, I always just try to, you know, I, I am technically kind of the youngest guy on the team, but, um, you know, I, I just try to lead by example and, you know, just do what I do, be genuine, be authentic and just be myself. and. That's coming in every day, working as hard as possible, and um, you know, trying to go about it like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I had a chance to watch Kuz during his practice at South Bay. How do you respond today? Uh, he felt good and uh, was in live, the live portion of practice today. Well, you know, all the practice today. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're hopeful. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how he responds to today's work tomorrow morning. And, um, you know, if he feels good tomorrow morning, then we'll throw him in there tomorrow night. You know, he'll get his first run this year. Is there, is there a plan to ease him in minutes-wise? Yeah, we're going to, you know, um, loosely, uh, they're saying around 20 minutes, you know, so you know, a little bit of restriction there. Yes. They being the training staff and the former yes. staff. Yes. Yep. Did, did AD do everything today, and how's that shoulder? Uh, his shoulder feels good. Uh, has some soreness. Did not do the lab portion, but uh, should be good to go tomorrow. Yeah, it's a challenge, but um, you know he's got some familiarity with the guys who were here last year, and uh, you know, obviously he's uh, he's a sponge. So you know, as we're doing, you know, implementing our system throughout training camp and whatnot, you know, he's on the sidelines, you know, paying attention in film sessions, all, all those types of things, and you know, it, there'll be a, a little bit of a learning curve, you know, for him, but um, you know, hopefully it doesn't take too long. He's talked a lot about wanting to further his development, specifically as a playmaker. Have you gotten a sense yet of what? Well, you know, you can you can only watch so much on tape in a different environment than we've created this year, and um, you know we'll have to uh, just evaluate day to day with that stuff. And you know we're going to be aggressive in putting in positions to to make plays and, and to play make, and um, you know we'll just evaluate and see where it goes from there. Have you noticed uh, whether it was the Durant from the playoffs, Kawhi the last couple of years, are teams approaching? return and integration back into play more cautiously than they did say five years ago when you were in Orlando or Indiana? I don't know if it's uh, if it's really that different. Um, you know, I think everybody has a big picture mindset and, um, you know, that's what we're having here. You know, uh, I don't know if it's really very much different than it was a few years ago. What's the status on Orlando? Uh, he'll make the trip, but he's still out for, uh, uh, for tomorrow night's game. Has he um, ramped up what he's doing? Uh, we're we're trying to um, back him off and let him let him see if you know just staying off of it for a few days uh, you know helps it progress. Uh, so that's where, where he's at right now. So you just you just pulled it back. Uh, I think the last three days he's not done anything. Is there a time like is is there a, is there is this not a day to day injury? It seems like it's not a day to day injury. Is this is there a time period? That you know about timetable for Rondo? with Rajan? Yeah. Uh, still, still taking it day by day, and um, you know, there's not a timetable now. Is it a more serious injury than you guys thought? Are you guys in the MRI? We we don't think so, but you know, if there's still discomfort in there, we're going to be cautious. When it comes to Dallas, you think of Chris Stapps and of course Luca, but the other night, nine guys put up double figures with those two just combining for 22. What kind of challenge do they present? 
Uh, they're a, a, a much improved team. Um, you know, I think they're a playoff team this year. Just just watching them play with knowing what with what uh, Kristaps can do and, and Luca handling, um, you know, the shooters that they put around those guys and the, the the speed and force with which they play. You know, they they play with a high motor. They they run. They all shoot threes at all positions. Um, very difficult to guard. And obviously, Coach Carlisle is going to have them uh, working hard on the defensive end and uh, as well. So um, you know, it's going to be a challenge.